Episode 42 of Clear Shots is brought to you by Pinecast.com. Pinecast is an easy-to-use podcast hosting site that lets you post your show to the leading podcast platforms, including Google Play, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and more. Sign up for Pinecast today using the promo code R-63F8FB to get 40% off your first four months. If you got a podcast or are thinking about starting a podcast, there's no better place to do it than Pinecast.com. Again, visit Pinecast.com and use the code R-63F8FB and you get 40% off your first four months. Today we talk about uh, politics for a good chunk. Uh, we talk about football, and we also talk about um, microtransactions in video games and how much money they make off of those. So, uh, let's get right into it. Don't give them clear shots! Don't give them clear shot. Don't give them clear shot. Don't give them clear shot. So, uh, we were talking about it when I got here around, uh, 530 or so, but, uh, Takashi 69 is facing 25 to life for, uh, racketeering. Uh, conspiracy to murder, attempted murder, gang violence, conspiracy for gang all, violence. All the big ones. All the big ones. He's fucked, which... Good. You know, Fuck it's... If I give a shit. It really... It sucks. Does it, though? I think... <clears throat> I think no matter how bad of a person you are, if your music... I mean, you can say whatever you want about music nowadays, but if you're good enough musically as far as pop and rap is concerned, to be a number one hit four times in one year. Nobody else has ever done that, ever. Is it, though? (laughs) To to have a number one single four (laughs) times in a calendar year, that's pretty crazy. But the fact that he is such a massive piece of shit makes me not really care about it at all. The 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 problem is that he's a massive piece of shit. Yes, I don't give two fucks about him. So I I think I think I feel bad mostly if you separate the artist from the art. I feel bad about that. But right, you can't so really Bill Cosby. do that. You can't really. Yeah, it's basically the same as Bill Cosby. Kill, kill, but, 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 but uh, kill Bob, I never thought kill. Bill Cosby was that funny anyway. Kill Bosby. Well, I liked some of his, like, yeah, like, I feel like he was just, his appeal was like such a family appeal. Like, he was such a broad appeal, you know? It's he like, like um, he was like the black Seinfeld. Kind of. Or like Jim Gaffigan. I feel like he just had like uh he was able to reach like a long range of different uh senses he, of humor. My dad explained he was the kind of stand up comedy you could watch with the whole family. Yeah. And there's not a lot and of I have done like that. that. I've yeah. s- I've seen them in or I've seen him in a I saw him at Turning Stone once. When you were younger, right? When you were like thirteen or something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's probably most of the time I mean it's basically was my first like stand up show yeah so and it is it would be a good introduction for someone who's young and you know because he's a good blend he's a good blend of like physical comedy and stories and one-liners and yeah well it's also the idea that like you've seen him on tv a million times because i grew up watching that even though it was like an older show by the time i was a kid it was still on tv yeah it was still he also did little bill yeah. Remember that when we were younger? Yeah. That was a good show. It made me racist. I mean, it was a he, good show. you can't, I mean, yeah, his reach was just really, I mean, you can't really deny him as a comedian. No. You know, like what he does, he's good at it. It's just a matter of like, uh, it, it's part of, like you said, it's like separating the artist from that, the actual person, the art from the person themselves. And that's, that happens a lot, I feel like. Yeah. There's I'd a lot say of times most like, rappers you have to do that with because most most rappers, especially shit, all of them mostly are all not good. Like even Eminem was a fucking domestic abuser, drug addict, yeah. gangbanger when he was younger, you know. And it's like, well, yeah, it's like, a, well, I don't think he was a domestic abuser, but he definitely fucking boasts about doing it, and that's not good. <laughs> you know, when you talk about how you fantasize about killing your mother and your wife and raping your wife and stuff like that that's not cool i mean it's right. cool but 
you don't tell people about it. Yeah. <laughs> or like Louis C.K., though. That's the thing. That's a different thing, though, because Louis C.K., I feel like his shit wasn't that bad. But like, Dude, there when was you also- compare it, like, if that was the only thing going on, you'd be like, fuck that. But that was legitimately, like, the diet the diet RC Cola of yeah. the soda that was going around. Yeah. Like, the and thing the that bugged thing me, is, too. Well, I think I know what you're going to say. He got permission. Yeah. Well, it, and it's also, he talked about how much he likes jerking off in front of people. And he talked about how he did it years. all the time. For years. Nobody should have been it. surprised. He literally had an episode on his show about jerking off in front of people and how proud he was to be a chronic masturbator. And, it's, and to me, that's not the same thing. As, like, a sexual assault. No, because they could have left the room. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I don't know. Because, uh, like, you could be like, oh, I'm pulling my dick out. You can stay or go if you want. <laughs> it's like, can I jerk off in front of you? And it's like, well, obviously you want to, so. <laughs> you know what <laughs> It's like, if you're going to do it, just though, do it. Is that. It, it's, not, it's not really hurting the person in any way. How? And they don't have to watch, you know. <laughs> they could just close their eyes. How? How fucking strong will do you have to be to just be able to just instantly whip it out and be rock hard instantly? Yeah. Or do you think he started? He had to like he probably fucking fluffed do the, it up a little. To, he had to fluff himself for yeah. like a couple minutes. Yeah, there's definitely some fluffing going on. It's it, it's just that there was so much shit that was way worse at the time, and he got the same amount of shit for it, even yeah. though it clearly wasn't to the same degree. And yeah. then when he came back, he got shit for coming back. And yeah, it's I like that oh, was strange. You, it's like, is there a, <laughs> maybe there should be like a written amount of time you have to serve before, before you, you can, can come back. Come back from jerking off in front of people. But I, I, from what I heard, most of the shows that he came back to, people wanted to see him. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he sold out all of his shows yeah. when he came back. So, well, the one, first one he came back and didn't really tell anybody. He just kind of showed up. Yeah, wasn't he at Dangerfields, like the notorious club where comedians go to die? Yeah, something <laughs> like, like where that. their careers resurgence. So that's where the day the laughter died was recorded. And people were upset because they didn't know he was going to be there, and they got mad that he showed up. But it's like, well, he was the last person. I'm pretty just, sure. Like, so just the, leave. <laughs> the the people that get concerned about stuff like that are not the people that should be consuming stand up comedy to begin with. Yeah. And also, what is he going to do? He's just going up there to do his act. It's not like he's going to go up there and jerk it off. <laughs> that would have been the best fucking thing he could have done. That would be the ultimate joke right there. And then it would be he, so if, meta. Oh, my God. And then he just does that and then leaves. I never thought stage. of that, but yeah. <laughs> Cause he, That's too good. There's so many witnesses. He'd be doing it like that'd be his ultimate fantasy. You know? Think of all those people that are watching him jerk off. Yeah, I think it's, I, I don't know, that whole situation, in every situation, really, you got Cosby and uh, oh, yeah, Weinstein, those two are pretty bad. Yeah, well, but who else was, was up, uh, Kevin Spacey? Those are also things where, like, there were dozens. They were doing it, so, like, a really often and people knew about it and aggressively too yeah and people weren't saying anything until until uh, that's the thing what, what about all what about <laughs> what about all these people that knew about it that weren't saying shit are they getting chastised because right, like, they they they're be, just as guilty in my yeah. opinion yeah they're if just you know as about guilty. that and don't say anything it's yeah. partially your responsibility you know what's crazy is it's basically been two years since all this has come out it doesn't feel like it's been two years the whole me too movement and Stuff like that. Yeah. That can't have been two years because, no. Has it been two years? I probably, feel like I would say so. It happened before we were doing the show. It feels like the Cosby thing has been out for a long time. Definitely. And it feels like he totally, like his appearance even changed. Hannibal Burris came out with that at least, when was the Justin Bieber roast? Because it was right before the Bieber roast. Because they made fun of Hannibal about it. So it must have been like three or four years ago. Hmm. We'll yeah, I don't up. know. But I know that it's fucking... It, it, the whole thing was weird that, like, Cosby sort of, like... He started to look creepier and creepier after that shit came out. Maybe because he didn't have to keep up appearance? Yeah, I guess. I mean, he started getting, like, the lazy eye and shit. It's like, well... I, it's almost like it affected his physical... <laughs> like, his physical well-being. <laughs> 
It's very strange, though, because you look at that guy throughout his career and you're like, well, this guy's like a family man, like the way he was presented to everyone. He was like this stand up guy that was like a fucking just a good dude. Like, that's the way he was he was presented. And his comedy was all clean. It's just a it was kind of a shock. Yeah. The Bieber roast was uh, three and a half years ago. Yeah. So Bill Cosby's been under the gun for three and a half years, so I would have to say that... Well, the, well it took him long enough to fucking finally do something about it, you know? It's like he's in jail now, isn't he? Finally, yeah. Well, because they had to gather all those women and have them bring to court. Well, the and then you is, look at the other side of it and go, like, we... we We've at we're at this point now where people are like guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, we were just talking about the whole Kavanaugh thing. Yeah, where it's like you can you go out and just say, like, what is to stop you from saying that shit? Like, there's really nothing, and everyone's yeah. gonna believe you first. That's the thing that bugged me about. There's two things: the Kavanaugh thing, and then the thing that Norm Macdonald got in trouble for. I'll start with Norm Macdonald. It was right after the Kavanaugh thing. The accusations and all these other accusations, and Norm Macdonald was supposed to be on the Tonight Show with uh, Fallon or Kimmel or whoever. And they somebody interviewed Norm Macdonald while he was on his podcast. Somebody asked him, they go, "So how do you feel about all these accusations?" And he goes, "Well, he goes, you know, they had that small little feminist uprising in the '90s, and it was uh, one woman can't be wrong, and then it was a dozen women can't be wrong." Right. And then about 10 years ago, it was a uh, hundred women can't be wrong. And now it's no woman is ever wrong. Let's believe whatever any woman says because they're women. Yeah. He goes, that's not fair to anybody. <laughs> no, he goes, no. so now if a woman gets accused of a crime, it's, it's the men's fault. And he was bringing up all these things where a woman, where women were sexually, women in power were sexually assaulting teenage boys, young boys, stuff like that. And the, the boys were the ones getting in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. And he ended up getting banned from primetime networks. He was banned from The Tonight Show and The Late Show. And his show got canceled. Well, not his... Um, one of his stand-up shows got canceled. He's still doing his, his podcast and stuff like that. Then they had the Kavanaugh thing where it's like... <laughs> every single witness they brought up testified uh, for the case. And they were on Kavanaugh's side. Every single person that they brought up supported Kavanaugh. Mm-hmm. And yet that whole thing went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah, the whole thing was that she had evidently to her like uh, therapist or whatever mentioned something but never brought up his name. So she had mentioned that this happened like years and years ago, but she'd never t- said that it was Kavanaugh. Yeah. And that was really the only evidence that they had that it actually happened. Yeah. She was just she just had a story about how he choked her and fucking basically raped her. But it, that's that's all that there was was a story, yeah. But it gets hard because how do you prove that kind of stuff? And I think it's the, the same only way thing. to prove it is to do it right. You have to test somebody right immediately after. Yeah, and that's the thing that uh, Joey Diaz said in that video. We said he right, goes, they don't come out right off the bat. Yeah, and it's it's the thing is if you want justice, then come out right away. It's you know it must be trauma. You know, my ex girlfriend was raped, and it was awful. But years down the line, you can't but do anything about it. the thing it. is, is, she went to the authorities as soon as she could, and the guys put away. Yeah. But she didn't wait fucking 20 years and wait yes. for this guy to become a congressman or a exactly. whatever. You know? Yeah. It's it's That's the part, is that it's like, you know, is she bringing this up because he did it, or is she bringing this up because he's in power? Chances are she was bringing it up because he was trying to get into a... Supreme Court job. Y- yeah. I mean, that's really... And now he's a Supreme Court justice, and you can't get fired from that. You know, you're in that for life, mm-hmm. and so now the entire case was for nothing, and now we don't hear anything out of her. Right. And somebody somewhere started a GoFundMe for her, and she ended up making over $2 million off this GoFundMe because of uh, distress. Yeah. It was a GoFundMe to pay for emotional damages. So she came away with over a million or $2 million, and now, you know, we're never going to hear from her again. Yeah, and we don't know if it even happened. Yep. Might not have even happened. She could have just said it. But as far if you're a Democrat, now you're always going to believe that he did it. You're just going to naturally believe that he did it because yeah. he's just fucking not a Democrat. <laughs> yep. Oh, I got in a big argument with one of my friends. Well, she's not my friend anymore, but I got in a big argument with a friend about that at the time. She was like, well, he totally did. I go, how do you know that? Well, 
I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't go to court and be so adamant about it if he didn't do it. And I go, I can be completely adamant that I won the lottery and bring it to the judge, but that doesn't mean I fucking won the lottery. Yeah. You know? That's apples and oranges, but at the same time, you can lie your fucking head off and be adamant and aggressive and full of vitriol about something and still be wrong. Yeah. That's all. That's what law is, is each side is going to be as aggressive as they can, but one side always loses. Just because you really believe your case doesn't mean you win automatically. Yeah. Well, it's just a matter of evidence, and when you wait that long, you don't have any. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, is, is... I bet a lot of people listening now are going to be like, wow, these guys really hate. It's like, no, it's, you know, if, if, if this happened, it doesn't have anything to do with that. If this happened five years ago and they had evidence against Kavanaugh and he still got away, that'd be fucked up and we'd be against him all the way. But there's no fucking evidence. There's no proof that he did that. Yes. Because she decided to wait too long. Five years or whatever. Yes. Just come out and do it. Like, I get it. Like I get, it's probably emotionally fucked. Like it's, it's completely fucked. Yep. Guaranteed. But that's what you have to do if you want any sort of justice. If you don't, then if you're going to just let him go, then that's your choice. Too bad. So sad. Like, it's, I mean, it sucks to have to say that, but that's the way it works. That's the fucking way I mean, we goes. don't have the, we don't have any sort of technology that's going to bring his jizz back into you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you have to test it right then and there. <laughs> Unless he rapes her again, and she goes, "Yep, yeah, that's exactly how it went the first time." Yeah. Reenact, <laughs> like it just reenact it. That's. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he choked me with you the left hand. <laughs> Not you can't bring the jizz back. Oh <clears throat> my god, that's that's all we're trying to say. The fucked up part about the, another fucked up part about that whole thing was that people were going around and like sending death threats to his daughters. Like his daughters are in middle school, or one's in middle school and one's in high school, and these people would go and like go to their high school and send and like threaten his daughters and shit. Like, wh- do you really care about politics that much, man? I think it's. I don't think people care about politics. I think people just don't like Trump. <laughs> So, like, anything that's associated with that Republican Party, if you're against it. But I think if you hate Trump that much, that means you must care about politics, right? Because I like Trump, but I still wouldn't go to, like, Hillary Clinton's house and piss on a rose bush, you know? thing is, like, I don't necessarily care a lot about politics, but I also don't like the way Donald Trump is with his, with everything, really. Like, just the way he presents himself it, it, yeah. as a president I think. as a per as like uh as a rep as a person, as, as a person that is representing the whole country he's yeah. not doing a good job but as far as the results that's, go yeah that's, as, as far as the results go he's doing a pretty fucking good job that's what people say but i mean it's like it's hard to test any of this to, and it's also you really don't find out if they did a good job until after they're gone yeah well, the thing is, you can't really do a good job because it's a, <laughs> it's not really even an eight-year job. It's even longer than that. Yeah. Like, the things that you're going to change when you get in, they don't change for a long time. And that's why, like, when, when Obama wanted to do, like, Obamacare, it's a long process. But, like, he probably should have known that whoever was coming in next was just going to change it. Yeah, as long as, as long as the next person was going to be a Republican. Yeah. And he should have, I mean. Well, even even a Democrat might have changed it, you know. It's like just a matter of if they agree with how how it works. Yeah. I think the big problem with Obamacare is that it took insurance from people that already had it, like my family. We had already had insurance, and then all of a sudden it wasn't covered by Obamacare anymore. Mm -hmm. Or it wasn't, uh, basically, you either shelled out the big bucks for triple a insurance top of the line insurance or you didn't you spent less money for obamacare but we were like middle of the pack but obamacare basically made it so middle of the pack insurance was automatically top grade stuff yeah so we lost insurance and then what ended up happening was that obamacare ended up being more expensive than what our insurance had been prior so we just didn't i haven't had insurance in fucking like Five years. <laughs> and that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. I well, don't that's, think... That's... I mean, it's like... I don't know. I don't know the intricacies of any of it, really. No. Because it's all too much to... There's probably... I think all of it's too complex to fix. 
you know there's i think we go so country. deep there's too many people in this country it should go back to yeah. way, the way it was way back like when our parents were kids where and even before then where it was state governments had their own thing so yeah. the states were their own little countries and then it was you know the federal government had like I mean, the thing is, the federal government. Yeah, the cover, the federal government can't overrule a lot of shit, though. Like that's what's kind of crazy. Is they that can like, or can't. They can. Yeah, but they shouldn't. But yeah. they do. They're not. Even supposed though it's not to. in their best interest, because every state's different. Every county is different. Yeah. You know, you look at New York. Have you seen a voting uh, a voting map of New York State? Yeah. It's Literally all everything. Blue. It, oh no! Everything is red except for New York City. Or yeah, yeah, the other way around. Everything is red, but New York City makes up over seventy percent of the state. And because of that, it ends up being all red or all blue. All I blue, mean. yeah. Because because basically everyone's there. Yeah, and that's another thing about the electoral college. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe maybe we should just maybe upstate New York should just be another state. Like have really, North New York I and South think it New should. York. It should be like you know. The state of Ontario, <laughs> yeah. or fucking, or we whatever. could have New New York, New <laughs> and Old York, Old York. That's the thing that bugs me is like, and you look at um, I, it was something I saw a whole like national voting map after the midterms, and it was something like you know, uh, the biggest the biggest counties in the country are obviously going to come from the biggest states, but when you look at uh, population, it's like. The most co- most counties in the in the country are red, but the biggest counties are blue. Mm-hmm. So, and there's only you know maybe out of the hundreds of counties, there's only like maybe thirty or forty that are blue. Yeah, but well, those are all the biggest ones. And the biggest reason Trump was able to win was because he knew which cities to target. Yeah, and also because you know Hillary didn't go to anywhere in the Midwest. Right, that's true. Like. <laughs> she she didn't she didn't go to Pennsylvania or Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois. Like she literally went to New York, California, and like I still don't see Indiana. why them coming there is gonna change anything. Like I, I I don't think like if she didn't come here, like if the if a candidate I was gonna vote for was blue and they weren't coming here to a Swigger or New York, just anywhere to my area. And some other guy that's red comes here. I think it just it's shows not going to sway my. I think, I think part mind. of it is that it shows that Trump was at least informed, or his advisors were I informed think his, I, on the yeah. issues that were concerning that region. Well, his idea was that yeah, he wanted to make people think he was behind them, basically. Like, yeah, to show doing, people he was behind. He's them. doing. I mean, the only thing that I have to say bad about Trump, besides the fact that he's an asshole, is that Flint, Michigan, is still fucked. They haven't well, had yeah. drinking water in like five years. Yeah. And Chicago is still a fucking war zone. Right. And, and California is... I don't even know what California is right now. California is just weird, man. They're all just fucking smoking pot and shit high, in the yeah. street. Like Canada. Well, have you seen uh, pictures of, like, downtown suburbs or downtown cities in California? People can't afford rent or houses, and people are legitimately... They get kicked out of their houses, and they just build tents and cabins in their yards and they live in their own yards that they yeah. get kicked out of well, that's, that's the way to go up. <laughs> at least you're still there <clears throat> fuck i'm glad i'm glad we're in a swiggo man i like a swiggo that's the thing is someone was saying how and they made a really good point i don't even remember who the fuck it was but uh it was we're talking about how one of our friends it was a it was a podcast somewhere they were talking about how you really should just worry about your local government because that's what really matters. Right yeah, now. think think global, act local. Yeah, I've been saying much. that for years. That's why I don't vote. <laughs> yeah, just vote for the mayor. <laughs> okay, yeah, the fucking coke addict. Because that worked. The coke addict, statutory rapist, fucking finger blasting <laughs> a nineteen year old right now. Yeah, so but she didn't, yeah, but she didn't say anything. So no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> she had to come out. Well, how are you going to prove that if it's just a finger? You know, is there fingerprints on the inside of the <laughs> vagina? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> Can you leave fingerprints? That's a test I'd do. <laughs> I don't think you can. I think there's, it's too, uh, rigid. Y- yeah. It's too, it's too, uh, moist. moist. <clears throat> too, too soggy. I mean, speaking of vaginas, I have one about a vagina. I could pull up. Pull. I'm gonna ask you a question. I mean, but... I could pull it up. 
I mean, you can if you want. <clears throat> Do you prefer an Audi or an Any? What do you mean? Like, uh, do you like the labia majora to be protruding? Oops, wrong one. Or uh, tucked inside? Um, I guess it doesn't matter, really. Okay. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that. Like, I really don't give a shit. I know. Vaginas are strange to me, man. I feel like... Uh, <laughs> I feel... I'm looking at that article, the one we're about to listen to. Yeah, if I can actually cast the right tab. Woman sues ex-boyfriend because his giant penis stretched her vagina. Yeah. That's what she um, said. I'm going to try and... I, I casted the wrong tab. Let's just say that much. Here we go. This is the one. So, <laughs> she says that her vagina was tight. Before she met her ex in 2016. <laughs> I forget exactly what I read about this, but it was fucking hilarious. It doesn't, it doesn't really. <laughs> no man can literally fill the gap her ex left, it says. <laughs> um. <laughs> How do you even claim this? I like, was okay, say... so you're suing him. Because for having he a giant fucked you dick. really nice. Yeah. Well, she wants to have reconstructive surgery for 150,000 rand. What the fuck is rand? Oh, it's... Currency uh, of some sort? It's African currency. It's in, uh, it's in uh, Randy dollars. It's, so it's just Monopoly money with Randy Will Bandy's face on She's it. trying to take him to court over having a giant dick, basically. And he has not responded to the allegations. <laughs> well, no, because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very fucking strange. But, um, but that's it's. This is a good example of well, people will just kind of sue over everything now. It's been like that for years. Yeah, it's just uh, frivolous lawsuits. Well, they had a South Park episode about that. What frivolous lawsuits? Yeah, <clears throat> it was an early episode. Uh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Remember um, Cartman sues, sues Kyle for half his stuff? Yeah, there's also the one where they have the suants, uh, and they keep throwing money into the box, and the guy's like... To- is that the one with the toilet? I th- the yes, blood I is on so. Clyde's penis! Yeah, yeah, yeah they try and talk to her or whatever. Sir Harrington, they Sir try Harrington. and talk, so, talk to Sir Harrington yeah, and to they, see if you have to sit forward or backward on the toilet. Yeah. Um, and it turns out you're supposed to sit backwards, so you have a shelf for your books and your pen and your quill. And <laughs> yeah, your comic books and your chocolate milk. <laughs> and Butters was the only one that was right. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, that's strange, though, because, you know, every woman I've met told me size doesn't matter. Yeah, but this, th- she doesn't think that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... It's, I mean, really, like, they would have to do some studying on that, I think, to... She'd have to, like, show She'd have them. to have, like, a before and after photo <laughs> yeah, and everything. I was just going to say that. An fMRI. Yeah. It's not a... It's not really something you can... It's not really cut and dry. <laughs> yeah. You can't really prove that either. <laughs> this one was funny, too. I saw this on... Somebody was talking about this on a podcast. This guy's 69 years old. Dutch guy. He identifies as 20 years younger, and he's legally trying to change his age. God damn it. I didn't want to finish this for Loco, but I guess I'm going to because this is fucking <laughs> stupid as shit. So, let's see. Um, What does this say about Tinder? 20 years younger. He's trying to be 20 years younger than his actual age so he can go back to work and achieve greater success with women on Tinder. So he's basically trying to change what age range he shows up in on Tinder. Just change your Facebook. That's what it's linked to. He's 69. What is this? Uh, so someone's actually arguing for him. If transgender people are allowed to change sex, he should be able to be allowed to change his date of birth because doctors said he has the body of a 45 year old. That actually makes way more sense than <laughs> I was expecting. How do doctors say he has the body of a forty-five-year-old though? But they just, are they just saying he's healthy? They got charts, yeah. <laughs> they got charts. They got a bell figures, cu- they numbers. Got a, <laughs> they got a bell curve, dude. 
Okay, but I don't understand. Okay, transgender people are allowed to change sex. I mean, that's still fucking weird to me. But they should be able to do it. But how can you change... Wait, hang on, hang on. So are they changing their sex or their gender? Because I've heard both. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess they're changing both if they want to. Because now that we're on this topic... The next topic I have is pretty good. Uh, I have it on my phone, actually. But you can't change your date of birth. That is a thing that's set in stone. Yeah, but isn't your sex, though, your biological sex? Technically, yes. Gender is what they want to change. But isn't gender a social construct? Isn't yeah. gender whatever you want it to be? Yeah. That's the idea so, is that they can change their gender. I mean, honestly, we've been getting bombarded with stuff like this for so long that I don't even give a shit anymore. Yeah. It's just that date of birth is when you were born, so you can't change that. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, this is when I was born. Just kidding. Like, <laughs> it's too weird for me. That's too much. Uh, and I mean, he doesn't look like he's 49. When uh, I'm on Tinder and it's like, scroll up to his face. <laughs> when I'm 69, I'm limited. If I'm 49, then I can buy a new house, drive a different Ooh. car. I can take up more work when I'm on Tinder and it say and it says I'm 69. I don't get an answer when I'm 49 with the face I have. I will be in a, in a luxurious position. I'm pretty sure this was a bit somewhere. Yeah. That's what I'm, I think I saw it on something. It might have been Segura. I guarantee you this was a bit. Oh, yeah. They were talking about the guy from England that identifies as a six-year-old, and he was suing to be able to go back to kindergarten. But it really, he was just like a sexual fucking uh, child molester that yeah, wanted to be able to have sex with that. kids again. <sighs> um, the judge said he had some sympathy with Mr. Rettelband. As people could now change their gender, which would once have been unthinkable. <laughs> no. It doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, and even what was that really unthinkable, though? I don't know if that was unthinkable. Like, no, because wasn't there evidence that there was a... Uh, I feel like people were doing that for a long time. Just It was just a matter of what degree you were doing it to. Yeah, I was going to say, weren't there like Roman generals or whatever that said they were women, but they were really men? Which is like the same thing. Yeah. I'm almost 99% sure that that was the thing. Yeah, it's okay. just, you can't, you, let's just be honest, you can't, I mean, you, can't you can't do that. You can't do that. How about somebody just says no to the guy and then problem solved, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the one I found. I found this today. It was a Yahoo article. Um, I don't have the article saved. I just have the headline saved. It says, uh, no one at work had any idea that I'm trans, and this is why I decided to tell them. And the, the top comment for the reply was, everyone was treating me like the gender I preferred, so I decided that I needed more attention. <laughs> what? So this person was trans, or is, this person's transgender. People were actually going fe- by. Fe- female to male, and he was so good. That nobody thought that he was a female from so the beginning. So nobody was recognizing that he was transgender. They were re- they were just thinking that he was a guy. Yeah. And he was upset about that. <laughs> Which got me thinking. Okay, it's like, yeah, is that that's attention seeking? What the fuck's that? What's that? Yes, it is. That is drastically attention seeking. 100% it is. Which bugs me because one of my really good friends is transgender. And uh, or whatever the fuck she is. Non-binary, gender fluid, yeah, whatever. whatever She's a girl. She has a vagina and she has tits. Yeah. I've seen both. She's a girl. So she's a girl. But she's not. I don't know, man. It's like I mean, she is. She is a girl. Like, let's be honest. She's it. She is, and she knows she is. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's the thing. Is she knows she is. No, I've known her for years, and now all of a sudden she's like, no, I'm non-binary, I'm gender fluid, I'm not. <laughs> well, I wonder how much of it is like people wanting to hop on the train. Yeah, know? people looking for attention. Because it seems like that's, yes, that's part of what it is right now. I, th- I think it's weird because I don't, <laughs> I think a lot of these people wouldn't have even considered it. With, unless it was like a big thing in the news and in and, and, politics and everything right now well really. think about how much attention these like instagram models and like yeah. uh cam girls and stuff get just because they're transgender or whatever yeah. you know it's because there's so much like um 
there's a lot of money involved. You're, so many people are exposed to it too yeah. that like it gets people thinking about it and wanting to do it just because it's something that'll get you attention. And obviously not all of them. I think some of them probably do think that they were meant to be something else. But guess what? You were meant to be something else. So fucking what? You're not. Be be who you fucking are. That's all it is. Yeah, like, I think just, my, big, just, my big problem with it is the insistence. Yes. I think it's just if you were born one way, just be that way. And it's like also if you want to wear fucking women's clothes, just do it. Yeah. Like who fucking cares? Like you if don't you're, have to if become you're a, a woman. If you're a dude that likes men and you like wearing women's clothes and you like wearing makeup, there's no problem with that. Yes. I, I think but there is a problem when you chop off your dick and get implants and and all that. That's weird. Yeah, you because know? there's no denying that it's fucking weird. You know, there, there's something there's something that comes with you know physical and completely drastic uh, medical yeah, procedures modif- modifications. It's like you know, you know, I have borderline personality disorder, but if I went around and told people and I got a lobotomy, you know, yeah. they'd be fucked up. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, cutting off your dick and balls because you feel like you shouldn't have them is not yeah. okay. It's like uh, and and getting your getting skin and fat and tissue replaced from other parts of your body to make a fake dick like, and replace your vagina it's with clearly it is not, not okay. It's clearly not meant to be that way. It's clearly not healthy either. That's going to be one of the things. Like somebody was saying, I was reading it on Reddit. Somebody was saying they. I had think this also post. it's part of the technology, the fact that we can do it now that people want to do it just because yeah. it's possible. And have you seen it? No, Have you I seen haven't. videos I and shit of that? I don't, I don't want to. Don't. Do not. And you know what the fucked up part is? There's a statistic going around about how many people with uh, gender dysphoria and people that are transgender or whatever. It all boils down to gender dysphoria. Yeah. And they have statistics based on it's something like 60 something percent of them commit self harm and about 40 something percent of them end up committing suicide. Mm-hmm. And out of all the ones that are in group A, that group. That get their sex change, the statistics don't change. Yeah. So getting your dick and balls chopped off, or getting your tits cut off, or getting implants, or getting a fake dick put on doesn't help you at all. You're still just as mentally fucked as you were before. The yeah. problem is, is that there's no medication for it that they find out by now. Well, they, yes, I think a lot of them think that that's what's gonna save, like, solve everything. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not saying don't go do it if that's what you really want to fucking do. I'm saying if I think we're saying if you're gonna do it, you gotta go through with it, and you gotta hope for the best. It's not gonna be the be all end all. And it's and, and and there's real shit. Like I imagine most people go through it, look into it, and, and what happened. Like if you're smart, yeah, you look into what the fuck is going on, what complications there could be, what but things then, you should and shouldn't do. You know, we're gonna turn the mics off for a second because I'm gonna name drop somebody. Completely happy, completely yeah. normal. I see her all the time. She's awesome. She has the same exact thing that we're talking about now, but she doesn't put a, a stamp on it, doesn't put a spotlight on it. She just goes day to day about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, just you know, tell the people you love, tell your friends, tell everybody, hey, this is how I am, this is how I want to be treated. Mm-hmm. Don't go around expecting special attention, because when you expect special attention and you don't get it, I think that's when it fucks with your head. And also, don't expect people to know. Yeah. Don't expect people to know your pronouns, know the way you're going. Yeah, and people aren't going to ask you your pronouns either like they want you to do. No, because most people don't care. If well, we're being completely honest, most no, people most don't most people care. don't care, which is the thing. It's like, just do it and don't don't make it a big deal. I think the people that make it a big deal are the problem. Yeah. It's like, that's what really makes it an issue because <laughs> it brings it too much to into, the, into the light. Yeah. It's uh, like, there was, I mean, even when homosexuals were starting to be a thing it's like if you just didn't talk about it and why well, not starting own. to be a thing but starting to be like a movement. well yeah Being yeah exactly that's what i mean yeah yeah like be coming into the spotlight sort of thing and and that's the thing too is it puts a lot of people off is you watch you see videos and pictures of these pride rallies like they had a pride parade or yeah a pride well, festival you don't see. in a swiggo and it was fucking weird dude yeah Fucking people walking around in gimp suits with like nipple tassels and body well, you don't paint see, and shit you don't like that. See straight people parades. No, you know? <laughs> we 
We should do that though. That'd be fucking hilarious. It's just dudes. dudes. <laughs> We're just jerking off in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's weird. Yeah, it's uh, it's the same. But the thing it was like with homosexuals, it was like they wanted to be accepted more than anything. I think that's part of what this transgender thing is as well. Yeah, but the thing is, they're 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 on the they're on the uh, the coattails of the gay pride stuff. Yeah, and the only reason people are okay with how fucking eccentric and fucked up gay pride parades are is that nobody cares about gay people at this point. Right. It's not like a. It's not a taboo topic anymore. Yeah. Like it's just know? it's just a normal. Because nobody nobody comes out as gay anymore. People come out as trans or yeah. non-binary or gender fluid. Moving it into a realm where we might be going too far <laughs> at a certain point. <laughs> I don't know. It's very strange. Like I was saying, because it's the... a, it's a matter of when does it end? Like when can we, cause do we, do we let people become interspecies? Like, do we let people Pedophilia. become a snail? Like, well, there was like, the whole thing. There was the whole movement online and there was, cause uh, there's people that want to do that shit. There's people that want to fuck kids. Yeah. And at a certain point, they want to add pedophilia. Yeah, to the and at LGBTQ a certain point, they're thing. gonna be fighting for they're gonna rights. Be like, well, if if this child is in love with me and I'm in love with this child, it, it's true love. And there's gonna be people. There's gonna be people on the left that want to support it just to show how like yeah, left that's, they are. That's gonna be the death. That's the death of the left. Is that there's people that are more left than others and is pushing them towards yeah. the right. Where like way back before Trump, before everything, I was considered liberal <laughs> and i haven't changed any of my opinions and now all of a sudden i'm like an arch right conservative it's because and i'm the same way that i've been for like yeah, six it's, years it's almost like i'm here on the line <laughs> and the left like the border between left and right is here and the right is just kind of pushing it this way yeah. because the left is so fucked no it's fucking hilarious because you know because we were doing the same circle wrestling podcast yeah 2013 2012 yeah and I had the same, we would bring up politics every now and then. I had the same viewpoints. And at a certain point, even <laughs> even leftist viewpoints are going to become Republican viewpoints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's very strange. They, it's very strange to me, man. There's there's issues with the, there's more issues with the far left than there is with the far right, I think, right now. Yeah, because I think everybody's, I mean, you could say this about both sides. I think everybody's perception of the far left and the far right are completely clouded by the media. Mm -hmm. It's you know people go well every Republican's racist it's like no but I maybe but I know a lot of racist liberals too I'm sure there's a lot of both yeah you know every each side has a lot of fucked up people but the problem is now is that well the problem also is that those fucked up people are always the ones who run for, run for president and they're also the ones that are the loudest yes that's the problem is that they're the loudest and they're the ones who want to get in fucking office yeah it's it's not it's never like, the fucking fuck the blacks take away their right to vote and then other people are like fuck the whites take away their right to marry and then the other ones are like let's fuck kids yeah <laughs> and then everybody's like mm. no let's not do that let's not do that let's just vote for billy <laughs> <laughs> you just lost your votes friend yeah. <clears throat> so yeah that's how politics work <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah, so if you wanted a crash course on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking crash box HBO edition. <laughs> Clear shots edition. Uh so the NFL. What about the NFL? How do you think the playoff picture is gonna go out? You think the Packers are probably done, right? Their schedule is pretty easy coming up. So you think they went out, they can be good? They, I don't they, think they went out. Go nine, I, think, five and one. I think they lose to the Bears. So five, five and I think can, they win the rest of their games. It's just a matter of if they can win on the road because they haven't. They've won all their games at home. What's they tied one. They tied record? one game at home. They're four, whatever, and one. Four, whatever five, and one. Losses. Four, five, and one. I think. So, and all of their away games they've lost. All of their home games they've won, besides the tie with Minnesota. So it's a matter of can they win on the road at, uh, well at at Minnesota I think at, uh, Arizona. And yep. then they got to play Atlanta, Chicago, and Detroit. Detroit, yeah. Somebody else, too, I think. I don't know, but I, I think all those games are winnable. It's just a matter of, like, can they win those games on the road? And if they can do that, they might have a shot. And they got to get Cobb back. 
Jimmy Graham will play next week. It's like they they. I think it's just a matter of, and if they don't, if they don't make the playoffs, Mike McCarthy's gone, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's funny we were talking about football. We well we did we were doing the show for a while and I was cursing the Cowboys and now that the show is over, <laughs> the Cowboys are on a two game win streak. Yeah. <laughs> well, I said that at the beginning. That they can, I think that's a team that comes in, yeah, in, into their own at a certain point. They're five and five now. They play the Redskins, who just lost Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. They're losing their four starting all linemen, They're losing their top two receivers, They're losing one of their running backs, and two of their defensive starters. The Cowboys need to go ten and six to make the playoffs. If they can beat the Redskins, I think. I think they make their playoffs. I think they win the division. I don't know about their run, though. I don't think they. Go I think on they a run, run into somebody that beats them. Best case scenario, they run into either the Bears, <laughs> or <laughs> they either run into the Bears or the Panthers. Like that's best case scenario. Yeah, or not even because they have to run into a wild card team. So they either run Seattle. into the they either run into the Seahawks, the Vikings, or the Panthers. I think Seattle's probably going to be in that. Yeah, it's it's going to come down. I mean, as of right now, it's just like it doesn't look like anyone's really got much of a chance against the Saints. Nope. The the even the Chiefs and the Rams. I mean, the Chiefs lost to the Rams, but I mean, honestly, I think the Patriots are better than the Chiefs. Maybe. And I think the Patriots are better than the Rams. Mm. The Rams secondary in their line. Like, the only thing the Rams have on defense is the front four. thing about the Rams and the Chiefs are they're both just strictly offensive teams. Yeah. And I don't know that, but New England's kind of the same way. And I don't know, their defense is probably better than both of those teams' defenses. And they got Bill Belichick. I think that's their, yeah. I, and and I was talking to Christian about this the other day. It's like w- Tom Brady has had Bill Belichick to do these things for him. He's been able, like, all he has to really do is run the offense. He has to make changes here and there, but he does not have to do what Aaron Rodgers has to do, and that is to call a lot of fucking plays, make these adjustments like, hey, we should run this play next. Tell Mike McCarthy what to do. Like, I feel like most of that's yeah, Bill. Yeah, but I think the argument against that, too, is Tom that just has such he a, has he, to make the plays, and he yes, is probably the most mentally tough quarterback that's what it is, ever seen. That's what it is, is that he has the skill set to do all that. Yeah. Um, I think in a vacuum... I think he just has it. He, he obviously has way more support from his coach than Aaron Rodgers does. I think in a vacuum, uh, Rodgers is more talented than Brady. But I think also when you factor in that Brady is a lot more durable, uh, yeah. he's a lot... Well, the thing is, Brady doesn't run. No. You know? You're going to get But he doesn't more. have to. I mean, if Rodgers didn't no, he have doesn't. to, do you think he would? He doesn't have to. I think he still would. Do you think he still would? Because that's part of his game, is moving and finding lanes to throw. Like, I, I think that's a But do you think, do you think if he game. didn't run, he'd be more durable? I think if he didn't run, he'd get hurt less for sure. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, if if I had to make a Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks just that I've seen play, and it's probably wicked controversial, it's Breeze, Brady, Rodgers, Manning, and Manning. But I have Peyton Manning is on the cusp. Yeah, and because and uh, we Mahomes. were talking about this the other <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were talking about this the other day. If um, Breeze wins this Super Bowl and he wins MVP and he wins Super Bowl MVP, is he better than Peyton Manning? Mm, I yes, I, I would say so. I think so. I think I mean, the argument. Like, I think the argument against it is that Manning has five MVPs and Breeze would have one. I yes, I think that's part of it. I think it's also like, I don't know. I felt like Brady or uh, Manning was so like. He was such he was, a huge part of the offense. But he was so lucky to have two Hall of Fame receivers, an all-pro tight end, and a borderline Hall of Fame running back his whole career. Yeah. And he still only won one Super Bowl with those people. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you give shit, I'm not even going to mention Brady. If you give Rodgers, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark, and Edgerrin James, what the fuck do you think Rodgers would do with those guys? 
Yeah. You know that's, what I mean? That's the thing. Like, Rodgers won a Super Bowl with what? Greg Jennings as his best receiver? Jordy Nelson as his best receiver? Well, they had Cobb, Randall Cobb, too. You know, he was young, but... They did but have a. Would you I rather? Mean, would you rather have? Would you? Okay. If you look at the team in retrospect, you're like, what? Like that was a really good team. But at the time, they didn't really know, know because they were all pretty young. I mean, you, even Jordy was kind of. If young you were a time. coach, if you were a coach and you had just a regular quarterback, and have, so you had Alex Smith, would you rather have Jordy Nelson and Greg Jennings, or would you rather have Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne? You got to take Harrison and Wayne. Those two are. Those two guys are locks for the Hall of Fame. Harrison is probably the most underrated receiver of all time. I guess you do. He caught over. I he caught 150 passes in one season. The biggest thing with Jordy was that he had a the chemistry. Yes, there was yeah. like a connection between. But you're him not. And you're him. not going to have the chemistry. You're just going to have the pure talent. Yeah. And I mean, you want to talk. Think- you want to talk chemistry. Look at practice footage of Peyton and Harrison playing. They would practice blindfolded and still well, complete plays. Yeah. I still think Jordy is pretty naturally talented. You think he's better than Marvin Harrison, though? I think he's better than Reggie Wayne. I would take Jordy Nelson over Reggie Wayne, but I would not take him over Marvin Harrison. I'll answer that question after another season, when, <laughs> when Jordy when Jordy's able to play. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think a lot of uh, baseball, I think a lot of football is very uh, subjective. Yeah, because it's a team game. And it's really annoying that a lot of people, I mean, you and I do it all the time. It comes down to just who has the best quarterback, but that's really what it is nowadays. You know, back when we were kids, <laughs> the, the, it didn't come down to the best quarterback. The, it came down to, you know, the best defense and then the best well-rounded offense. That's why the Buccaneers won, the Ravens won. Well, the Monday night game is an obvious, it's clear evidence that the game's moving offensively into and an offensive that's direction. that's why I was pissed about it. That's why I was bitching at you about it the whole night. And in the first quarter, there was probably three or four uh, like defensive PIs. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, the thing is like you can call those. Like they were probably PI. But I feel like you also have a little bit more leverage towards the offense and they're going to be more likely to call some of those that are borderline. Mhm. And I think that's why they scored over 100 points or whatever they did. It's like total it was 104, 105. And it's I mean, I think people like offense to a degree, you know, I think people, the idea was that people really like offense and they like touchdowns, but do they like, like fucking six touchdowns? No. Do they like six touchdowns for each team? That's why honestly, the, the, this year the Cowboys are having is one of the best years I've seen because their defense is like top five and their offense is yeah. just average. Yeah. It's like, like it's every like game is just smash mouth Chiefs, dog shit. Yeah. It's like Chiefs Rams basically came down to who had the ball last. Yeah. It was like a Madden game. <laughs> it was like every we're going to score on every drive, and then whoever has the ball last wins, and whoever For gets sure. the ball at the half gets an extra possession. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it was, too. It was pretty fucked. I mean, it, it seemed like every drive was there was someone was scoring. And I don't know. It, there was a lot of talent in that game last night. There's a lot of guys on those fucking teams. So there's no denying how good those offenses are. But it's a matter of, like, they don't have defenses to support them. And if they did, imagine those fucking teams. It's like if you had if you had the Rams with a defense. Like, basically, if they had a key to lead, that's all they need is a key to lead back. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that would help a lot. Because he's probably, honestly, like a top five corner. But those two teams, I think the Saints and I think even the Seahawks look really good. I honestly, yeah, I would take the Seahawks over both of them, honestly. Yeah, I, I really those, would. Those teams are all definitely playoff like, teams. The Seahawks are so well rounded. They're so well rounded. Yeah, because really nowadays in in the NFL, all you need for a defense is a solid linebacking core and a decent D line, and that's it. Because like you look at the Cowboys, they have Leighton Vander Esch, who's putting up DPOY numbers. Yeah, you have their defensive line is good. The Seahawks have Bobby Wagner. Their D line is good. You know, mm-hmm. the Panthers have Luke Keekley, and then their D line is decent, above average. It's just a matter of getting pressure. If you can get yeah. pressure, there's you don't need to cover for that long. Because if you well, really, if you have a linebacker that can stop the run, like Keekley or well, Vanderash or yeah. Wagner, then huh. you're you're the rest of your defense can soften up because you know that you have that guy in the middle that is obvious. He's just going to lock it on the running back the whole game every time. Yeah, for the most part, unless there's like a middle zone of some sort. Yeah. 
Like a fucking that's what's so two. dangerous about the Tampa two that the Cowboys run and the Seahawks run every now and then. Because you only send out, you play the, a base nickel, yeah. and both linebackers are spying the run. Yeah. And if it's a run play, then one, or if it's a run play, then they both go after the running back. And if it's not a run play, you still just, have one going after the running back in case of a pass. The other one drops into the middle of coverage. Yeah, so the running back is always shut down. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that running the ball has become such a, I mean, there's a few teams that, I mean, the Cowboys are obviously run first. Um. I mean, they, they, oddly enough, the Seahawks are a run-first team nowadays. Uh, the Rams have Gurley, so they they run a lot. The Chargers run a lot with Gordon. But that's the thing I is that it's... even when you have a team like Dallas, where even if you shut down Zeke, you're not shutting him down exactly because he's that much better. I mean, you're not shutting down Gurley for a whole sixty minutes. You know, that's the thing is there's. Only a few teams that can really run the ball that well, like well enough where like it truly is going to affect the passing game. And that's why the Cowboys, in my opinion, are dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say it's Dallas, Seattle, Los Angeles, New Orleans, and Chicago. Yeah. I feel like a lot of teams can run the ball, but when they run the ball, they're getting two yards per carry. Yeah. And And that's where you get like, you know, New England and the Chiefs. The Chiefs, they have Kareem Hunt. He's decent. Yeah. Still, he's... But not even that's that's not gonna get you your play action to get them to buy. You're not gonna run the whole game. You're not gonna give Kareem Hunt twenty five, thirty carries a game. You're gonna give Zeke or Gurley or Kamara or Ingram, yeah, or uh, Howard. You're gonna give them twenty five carries a game. Well, another thing is like a lot of them, or even a lot Aaron of running Jones. backs. Yeah, well, when Aaron like, Jones like gets twenty five carries a game. The Packers don't lose, yeah. which is why Mike McCarthy has to be shot in the street because he doesn't know to fucking just give him the ball more. Yeah, and I thought, and he even said he was going to give him the ball more. He still did. I think another team. I mean, they're a bottom feeder now, but they're going to be great next year, in my opinion, is the Browns, because Nick Chubb and Duke Johnson is the scariest, yeah, two headed monster I've seen in a there's, while. There's a lot of running backs that are turning into wide receivers. It's like they're basically just another receiver that comes out of the backfield. Yeah, like gadgets. Yeah, like uh, or screen pass or like for Darren like a, Sproles kind of guy. Just like a check down dude, like a guy that's just going to run an out. Yeah, who's the guy and, in the, and the extra Cohen? Guy. Tariq Cohen? Yeah, something yeah. like that. But that's part of it. Is like they're not and that's using the thing is running backs. When you go back to Gurley and Zeke and uh, Le'Veon Bell, that's how they are. They'll yeah. they'll catch screens. They'll catch out routes. They'll run up the gut. They'll run tosses. They'll run counters. You know. And really, what you what what you see that's valuable with guys like Zeke and Le'Veon Bell and a little bit of Gurley is how good they are when they aren't carrying the ball. How good are they with blocking? How good are, are they with decoy packages? You know, how good are they with uh, double coverage when it's a pass play and they're in the slot? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. You well, know, it's the same with tight ends. Like you get guys like Jimmy Graham who can block pretty well. You know, like you also get guys who are primarily receivers. You know, like J- Jimmy Graham's pretty well rounded. I think. I think he can block pretty well. It's a matter yeah. of like. You have certain dudes like Richard Rogers was pretty much just a route runner. I mean, you could say like guys like Witten were probably the most. Travis Kelsey is like uh, Travis Kelsey. I mean Gronk, but he's not fair. He's the best tight end ever. Yeah, Zach Ertz. I mean, the opposite. You have Tony Gonzalez and Antonio Gates who can't block worth shit, but they're better receivers than anybody else coming out of the line. Um. It's all. It really all depends on the way you want to run your offense, the way this is you're schemed. Yeah, and fitting players into that scheme is a hard. That's part. why I think having a whole team of well-rounded guys is is the best way to go. That's why the Saints are so dangerous. You know. Yeah, because they're pretty much good. Like in everything. every receiver they they're have, like a Swiss. Ar- everybody's a Swiss Army. Yeah, guy. every receiver they have can catch and block. Yeah, both of their running backs can run, catch, and block. Both their tight ends can run, catch, and or can catch and block. Their defense is a whole bend but don't break philosophy. Yeah, you know? that's what you need for the most part. The Saints are probably the I best. Mean, if you just give up field goals throughout a game, you're fine. Yeah, as long as you stop guys for field goals, you're fine. It, Dude, really, I don't. The think... Saints. The Saints just held the defending Super Bowl champions to seven points. Yeah, they beat them forty-five to seven, seven fifty-two to seven. Like what the fuck? Yeah, they're a really good team. They're re- like a really good team. Honestly, I didn't see him coming either. Really, I didn't. Not I didn't think coming. they'd be this good. I figured they'd be they'd be good. I didn't think they'd be this good. 
It's but, weird because some of those teams from the beginning of the year that we thought we were going to be good are still good. Like it's it's kind of weird. Really, the, the only one is the league the hasn't really changed a lot. The, the Bengals definitely fucking ate shit. Yeah, but Seattle and um, Houston, Carolina changed a little bit. I think there were some of those teams that just really, like most teams, it seemed like were in form already throughout the beginning of the year. And most of the time, it's like it takes until week six or seven to yeah. know who they are. I don't think that really happened that much this year. Houston was the big surprise for me. Yeah, that's true. Because they started off. But I feel like. Overall, one three. I think overall most teams were pretty obvious who they were going to be. It was weird. Not obvious who they were going to be, but they stayed the same throughout the entire season. Yeah, I'd say the thing with Dallas is that they're lucky that Alex Smith is out for the year. Yeah. For sure. That's going to help, yeah, for sure. Because now they're top dog in the division. There's nobody going to be fucking come after him. No. I mean, how many wins does New York have? Two. Two. <laughs> Or yeah, three, really two bad. or three. But yeah. the Cowboys have a tiebreaker on everybody except for Washington. And if they beat Washington Thursday, they'll have the tiebreaker on the division. So all they have to do is go nine and seven. If they beat Washington Thursday and they go nine and seven, they win the division. That's ridiculous. Isn't that fucked up? And you know you know who won the division at nine and seven and went on to win the Super Bowl? The Giants twice. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it's usually like the team that wins the division isn't usually the team that goes. It seems like a lot of times you get wild card teams or like lower seeded teams that win. Or like the third ranked team. It's like you don't usually see the number one team go all the way. Yeah, because the Cowboys were the number one team in the league just four years ago and they lost to, you know, Green Bay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. They lost. <laughs> it was a shit show. Des caught it, and you know it. I don't think he did. You know what I mean? Like, when it hits the ground, it's... Yeah. Like, in, like in baseball, if it hits the ground when they catch it, it's not a catch, right? So I've been playing Mortal Kombat <laughs> X. Uh, been having a good time with it. You yeah. beat the story, didn't you? You said you did? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I just beat the story and then I kind of stopped playing it because it's a fighting game. You really didn't have any interest in it? Not really. I thought it was cool, like, seeing some of the, like, x-ray moves and fatalities and stuff. But once I see them, then that's it because I don't want to see them 185 more times. But you don't play against other people, do you? No, because there's latency probably. You want to play tonight? No. Guaranteed, don't. Because you're just going to do uppercuts. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a point. Just stand there and do uppercuts. That's all you got to do. Take a knee and do uppercuts. Do the Kaepernick uppercut. <clears throat> I don't know. I have fun with MKX. I just can't. Like, I'm in that middle ground where, like, I ch- I'm trying to learn how to play fighting games. But, like, if I play against someone who's never played it before, they beat me just because they spam the same move. And if I play against somebody who's better than me, they beat me because they know how to be the- play the game. So, so you got to play against the computer over and over. Or I and just over. have to play. I, I just mean, have to spam the same move. You play Madden against the computer, don't you? Yeah. And you play the show against the computer, don't you? Yeah. So it's the same thing. But I'm not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fighting game. I, mean, I can't do uppercuts in those games. I don't know. I have fun with MKX because you can you can log in and just go through like a whole tower within like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you have to do the towers. You also have to test your might once in a while. How do you do that? <laughs> Isn't that a thing, like one of the mini games? I don't know. I haven't done it. <laughs> Where you have to break the bricks. You have to break Oh, like yeah. I know. I haven't done that yet. This guy um, this guy gets pissed at Mortal Kombat. So this kid's uh, basically raged at an Xbox game, and he started shooting his gun off in his room. Uh, Casey L. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> it's my cousin. <laughs> Isn't what that game song? Was he Isn't that a Grateful Dead song? Yeah, Casey Jones. What mm. game was he playing? It doesn't say. It says an Xbox video game. He fired over a dozen rounds from two different handguns into his bedroom ceiling and walls. And one of them evidently struck a, a neighbor or something like that? Or a neighbor's house? His house, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so he had two handguns. He picks up a Springfield XDS, fires several rounds... And then grabs another handgun, 
and a Springfield XDM and fires another volley through the walls. So how do you get that raged though? Like I, if you're in that moment and you're that pissed and you're going to shoot off a gun, like you're probably going to shoot it a couple times, but to keep going and, and pick up another gun and shoot, He's keep not, shooting. The boy isn't well. He's not well. Like, I feel like <laughs> after you've shot the gun s- several times into the ceiling, you probably are going to come to grips with what's happening here. Mm. You unless think. you're unless you're out of your fucking mind. You would think so, yeah. Um he evidently he has a history of making threats of self harm. That's good. Which means that he's healthy. <laughs> I mean, I've done that, but I'm okay. Uh but oh, I didn't uh, make threats though, I just did it. I've never <laughs> I've never I, you know, even when I was losing in Mortal Kombat, I never fired a handgun. Do you own a handgun? Several times. If I had one, I probably wouldn't shoot it. No. I mean, we were losing in fucking Rock Band, and we didn't even think about shooting handguns. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's how they get you, though. In August, a gunman opened fire at an online Madden NFL 19 tournament in Jacksonville, Florida, killing two people and injuring nine others before turning the gun on himself. See, video games make people violent. Yeah. Subscribe to our newsletter. Yeah, fuck that, dude. This is Fox a News. A completely isolated incident. <laughs> this is Fox News. A fucking terrorist kills people at a video game convention, and apparently that means that everybody that plays video games is going to kill people. Yeah. Well, this guy also shot an 11-year-old after losing right? Uh, Wait, hang September. on. A 45-year-old man was threatening to shoot an 11-year-old boy at his school? They go to school together? Or did they just word that wrong? <laughs> at his school. Oh, well, I think they're saying at the 11-year-old boy's school. Okay. So does he go to school with them? Or? Maybe he just waited outside <laughs> with a school with a gun. But that's Fortnite. That's not a game. That's a lifestyle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. The 45-year-old man probably has way more Fortnite skins than the 11-year-old. Yeah, he so can, he, he already has the advantage. But you the never cosme- know. He has the cosmetics advantage. You know what would be funny is if the 45-year-old man was the 11-year-old's dad. <laughs> yeah. He goes, Jimmy, you better not go to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's classic Fox, New- Fox News. This is the guy. Is this right Fox here. News? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's that's how they get you. It's probably not even real. <laughs> Trump put the video games. <laughs> <in. laughs> but this guy, like, he just looks like a... He looks like... Yeah, he looks like a... Tra- he looks like fucking Travis Frederick. Yeah. You know, it's a classic Casey Jones, though. You know what I mean? Like, that's a Casey Jones thing to do. And it's also, he's he lives in Tennessee, so that's also a Tennessee thing to do. Guaranteed. I don't know. I don't. I, I just don't know. Like, you can get pissed at games, but, like, I feel like shooting a gun that many times is a little over the top. Especially if you're going to shoot it at somebody. He This kid didn't. So this kid's probably, he, he probably, he was the most responsible out of all of them. What like like I said though, I feel like the rage that you get from an Xbox game, it only lasts for like a couple seconds. But that's the thing, how mad do you get? How mad do you get yeah. nowadays? Like I don't it's really not get like that you get mad anymore. I just shut it off. Yeah. It's not like you throw shit at the walls. Like if I if I get pissed at the game, I I just go to YouTube and I lay down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if I get that mad like you know, you have the same setup. Your bed's right here. You play from your bed. So if you get mad, you just you just lay down. turn. Yeah, you just become <laughs> become horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> but like, at least this guy didn't shoot a person or threatened to shoot a person. He just shot into a ceiling, and then accidentally almost shot a person. I mean, I guess that's a little better. Still, don't use guns when you're uh, mad at Fortnite. It's probably Fortnite. <clears throat> I just can't, I, I honestly can't understand why people are still playing Fortnite. <laughs> is there any progression in that game? How long has it been out for now, a year? Like, like, there's no progression, then there's nothing that really keeps you playing. Like, the only thing that keeps people playing is, it's just like PUBG, though. Like, there's not really anything that keeps you playing the game. There's not. There's no incentive to play the game. The only incentive is buying skins. But how long has PUBG been out for, a year? It's been out probably longer than that at least like preview wise i mean like the full version's only been out for a few months wait did i say PUBG or fortnite fortnite i don't know when that came out did i say PUBG? yeah How fortnite's probably f- been out a year at least it didn't really blow up until 
a year ago. Yeah, maybe a year ago. But it wasn't like when it first came out. It wasn't. It wasn't even a battle royale game. No, it was a PVE game because I had the PVE game. Yeah, and then they changed it and were like, "Hey, let's make it free," which that won everybody basically. Yeah. The fact that it was free, and you didn't have to pay for every but everything. That that's the thing is people get into these free games and they're like, "Hey, it's free. I don't have to pay for anything." And then they get in it and then they start paying for everything. And they end up spending thousands of dollars on in-game shit that doesn't affect the gameplay at all. And there's also no It's why I, I find it hard to pu- play PUBG sometimes cuz there's not really anything you're playing for. There's nothing like you're not getting rewarded with anything. Yeah. And it's like, if you lose, what did you accomplish with it, really? Wait, did you say PUBG? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's my problem with it, too, is that it's like... Because Sean was just talking about how games are grindy now, and it's like, that's why the people, they need to be grindy, because people, they needs to have, the, you have to have something you're working towards. Otherwise, it's, it's you're not, you don't feel like you're accomplishing anything. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm like a boring gamer, because I literally play, I'm like, I play Madden 2K, in Mortal Kombat, and I mean the thing is, even in Madden and 2K, if you're playing franchise, like you're you're working towards something, you're getting like your stats, like you're trying to get. Yeah, and I play Final Fan, I play Final Fantasy seven and thirteen now and fifteen. Yeah, there's, it, but that's the thing is, back in the day, it was just like you'd play Super Mario, and there was no. The goal was to beat the game. Yeah, but now it seems like is it me or do games seem like they're shorter to beat? They're shorter to beat, yeah. Um, they're also more linear, I think. Well, well, I think I guess I guess Mario was super linear, but the idea is that they're all structured into a story. Yeah. And I think with Mario, it was the the way you it was the journey. Yeah, and I think you beat it faster the better you are at the game. <laughs> like the first time you play Mario, you probably took forever to beat it because there were certain levels you couldn't get past. Yeah, wasn't it with Mario when you ran out of lives, you had to start from the beginning? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that probably made it last a lot longer. Yeah, and you don't, and then they're harder. I mean, they were harder back then. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember uh, Super Mario 2, I got that for my Game Boy Advance when I was like 7, and I don't think I beat it till I was like 11. Yeah. <laughs> like, it took me years. It's like to most beat games game. now, are they're easy enough where like they kind of hold your hand through a lot of it and like yeah a lot of games you can beat in one sitting yeah if you really wanted to like i beat mortal kombat x in one sitting yeah, this weekend eight, maybe six to eight hours and uh dishonored wise. dishonored one and two you can beat in probably 10 to 12 hours um you know yeah maybe that's why people like rockstar games so much because they're, they're really long they're very very long and very very rewarding because it's part of it. a lot of stuff to do it's also and I guess that's part of the argument for Fortnite is that it's all multiplayer and you're not really getting to the end of anything. So, But you're not also really working towards anything. That's what you? I mean. Like, you don't really earn anything. Like in PUBG, the only things you earn are the things you the pay for. crates and stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm assuming Fortnite in, has crates, right? I haven't I really played it a few times. I think you do get some shit, but it's like with PUBG, you don't really get that much. You, you know, get the, crates. The reason I don't play PUBG anymore is because you can't pick what map you play on. You can. Well, not really, but... There's two different playlists now. There's a small map and a big map. Yeah. But there's two big maps. Yeah. And I don't like the desert map. I like the regular normal map, and you can't pick it. And every time I go to play PUBG, I get the shitty fucking desert map. (laughs) And it makes me so mad. It's a waste of time. I'm not that bad on the desert map because there's a lot of terrain that's like... There's a lot of hills and things like that, and you can hide from a lot of shit. Yeah. It's easier to cross the map without being seen. In that in that one, just because there's less lines of sight, I think. I find there's a lot less uh, fire fights in the in the desert map, though. Yeah, there's also less buildings. It seems like, like there's a, like more of a gap between buildings, and things like that. I think in I mean there are big cities, but I think with the first one, the grass one, it was there was a lot more density in buildings. Like, you'd have, like, the little groups of buildings, but there'd be, like, a lot more of them. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's... I I don't mind the map. It's just not as good as the first one, I think. What is this first one? Sandhook or whatever? Yeah, whatever it is. I don't know. Nothing will ever take away from the... Like, that solid two months where all we did was play PUBG. Like, me, you, and Sean, and Gary, and... Yeah. That other guy. 
Steel. Steel. T. Steelman. Yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to Steel. Shout out, baby. Uh, I mean, we still could do that. It's still there. Yeah, but I don't want to be on the desert map. That's the thing. Is like that map. It's it's. I don't even care what map I'm on as long as I, like if I'm playing with a group of people, I won't really care because I know someone on that team is gonna be good, or at least know what to do on that map. Because <laughs> I don't. Like I know Gary plays enough where he'd know. Like he'd be like, "This is just like you should probably be here. Like this is the spot we should go to. This and this and this." Because I wouldn't know where to drop on. Yeah, that but map. there's no water town in the desert map. There is. Uh, there's one that's like. <laughs> We make our own water towns on all of the maps. <laughs> we did it on the new one too, the small one. We found a little water town. Water town's always the hot drop, you know. I don't know. I really, I really like that drop that was by. Uh... Oh man, what was it? It was in like the bottom left. It was the three houses, the one that Sean and I would have the trap set up with. Oh yeah. What was it called? Polkia or Polka? Pa- uh, Puya? Oh, God, I don't remember the name of it. Poly- Pollyanna? No, 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 no. Why did it look up Comedy Central Roast? I typed in PUBG map. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it typed in Comedy Central Roast Season 10. Probably because you were looking for Justin Bieber. Right? No, that's right. I love that my phone just doesn't work when I'm at your fucking house. Fucking piece of shit, dude. Does, uh, did you pay for the My House bundle? The, uh, it's an addition. You gotta, it's an additional <sighs> charge. You gotta pay an extra 30 bucks a month. You gotta read the fine, fine print when you, <laughs> you gotta read the fine print when you sign those things, dude. It was above Gatka. Right here. Right there. Okay. Over, like, okay, so Gatka's here. Oh, yeah. This See, one, like, I think no where, one really... Where all the little houses are there. Yeah. Thing is, like, everybody goes to Gatka, but then there's that mountain on the other side, so, like, you can't really get hit from the other side. Like, unless someone swims. I'm pretty sure there's a lake there. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. So, like, you kind of have, like, three lines of sight, which is nice. I think like over by the on the uh at the military base there's that giant like tower that you can go way up to. Like you is go that up where, that hill. Is that where we used to drop when we I started? I think it was playing? the first time we ever played and I brought you up to the tower. It was like we the just, satellite like, camp, right? Yeah. yeah. We sat there and we made it to like we got like fucking sixth place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like our first thing game. is like when you're on that island, the military base island, there's not you basically have to luck out and have the circle end there at the at the base. Otherwise you have to cross the water and you're fucked. Yeah. I don't know. I like um I like dropping at the prison too. Yeah. It's usually kind of populated there though. As well, long as like Remember the one time we dropped there and there was nobody and it was like me, you, Sean and Gary, we got all the gear and we ended up winning that game. That yeah. might have been like one of three games that we won. Yeah, it's like a matter of knowing like how far you can jump and getting to the spot that you want to, like that's farthest away from the plane. Because like I feel like most people just kind of get like they don't drop super far because they want to get down quick and get weapons. Well, what you got to do is you got to you got to tilt your camera as far back as you can, but while you're tilting it back, you got to aim your guy down, and then you literally yeah. drop straight down and yeah. you land wherever you want. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Just drop straight down, and don't use your parachute. Uh, well, not to the very end. I think you have to use the parachute, right? Yeah, but not in GTA. Uh, they should make GTA. I'm motif. GTA Battle Royale. It's not my fault I ran into a gun store. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that video. I know you don't like Let's Plays, but I know you like that video. That video is fucking great with the fucking the black lady in GTA. Yeah, classic. Did you see this, the video of... uh? Albert Pu- get that guy calling uh, Albert Pujols retarded on uh, no he calls him retarded how do I do this how do I play it on the TV I've never done it on the laptop here we go oh that's uh, it's coming through my I was gonna say that's my phone no he like th- he- <laughs> it's pretty funny he like slips up basically and calls him retarded I don't, it said I connected. How do I play it? 
I don't know. You're not in the game. It's broken. Do it with your phone. Type in Pujols is retarded <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I just want to see him call him retarded. It's pretty funny. He's supposed to say, he's trying to say Pujols is retired. <laughs> like it's a pretty casual play to third base. And Pujols can't run, Pujols can't run for to save his life. So any hit to third base is an out. <laughs> it's so clear how he's, how obvious it is. <laughs> That's good. Oh my god, Pujols is retarded. But yeah, that's uh, I guess that's it, right? Now that we know Pujols is retarded. what are we at now? Like an hour and forty <laughs> minutes? I don't even know. Yeah, hour and twenty. I think that'll be good. I gotta go home. I have work at fucking six in the morning, so probably right. end it. I'll hang out for another half hour. Or so I'm done talking on the microphone personally. Okay. Don't don't shoot guns when you get mad at uh, games, kids. When and you if you're gonna play Fortnite. Mortal Kombat X, make sure you play as uh, uh no Raiden Kenshi. Play as uh Kenjutsu Kenshi. He's the best character. Well, him and the other guy. I thought it was Reptile. Dude, Reptile is actually okay. Garbage. <laughs> he is so garbage. Oh my god, I fucking hate Reptile, dude. He's so bad in MKX. I liked the old Mortal Kombat games where. Sub Zero, Scorpion, and Reptile were the same character, but with different, with different colors. colors. <laughs> <laughs> that was when it was good. Bring that shit back. I don't want no. I don't want my Scorpion with a skull face. No, me neither. All right, so that's the that's the lesson we've learned today. Yeah, we're out. Clear Shots is available on any of your favorite podcast platforms. ClearShotsPodcast.com is the best place to find all of our social media links. You can find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at ClearShotsPod. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.